Plastic deformation is defined as any deformation that is not recovered when the load is removed. In other words, a specimen has deformed plastically if it does not regain its original shape after the force that caused the deformation was set to zero. Up to a stress value equal to the yield stress, all the deformation is elastic, which means if the load is removed, the specimen recovers its original shape. Once the stress increases beyond the yield stress, the specimen begins to deform plastically. In this case, when the load is removed, the elastic portion of the strain goes to zero, and the specimen is left with a permanent plastic strain. In the following discussion we will study plastic deformation of low carbon steel, which is considered a ductile material. Shown here is the stress strain curve or low carbon steel. The top graph is a zoomed in view of the strain between 0 and 0 0.01. As you can see from the top graph, the curve is linear until the strain reaches 0 0.001 to After a strain of 0 0.001 to the curve is nonlinear. This point where the curve switches from linear to nonlinear is known as the elastic limit, or yield point. The value of the stress when the material reaches the yield point is known as the yield stress, or sigma y. For this particular example it is equal to 230 megapascal. Beyond this stress, further deformation of the material is unrecoverable even after the load is removed. Some materials such as low carbon steel exhibit an upper yield point on their stress strain curves, as well as a lower yield point. As the stress is increased beyond the yield point, the material deforms plastically and the stress strain relationship is nonlinear. As the stress increases, the strain keeps increasing until the ultimate or maximum value of the stress is reached. After the maximum stress value is reached, Necking of the specimen begins to occur and less stress is needed to further deform the specimen. Notice that the diameter of the specimen at the neck is less than the diameter above or below it. The neck is also known as the break point. After a certain amount of plastic deformation, the neck specimen breaks at a stress value equal to the breaking strength. The specimen breaks along a 45 degree plane where the shear stress is highest. Consequently, the fracture surface of a cylindrical specimen forms a cone with a 45 degree half cone angle. Strain hardening refers to the increase in the yield strength and hardness of the material as it plastically deforms. Within the elastic region, when a specimen of a given material is loaded, it deforms elastically. The elastic strain is shown as a green bar at the bottom of the plot. When a specimen is unloaded, the strain goes to zero and no changes occur in the characteristics of the material. If the stress is increased beyond the elastic limit to a value that is higher than the yield strength of the material, plastic deformation occurs. The plastic strain is shown as a red bar at the bottom of the plot. If the load is set to zero, as discussed before, the specimen retains a certain amount of plastic deformation. If the specimen is placed under load again, more stress is required to continue to plastically deform the material. Hence plastic deformation increases the yield strength of the material. Notice how as more plastic deformation is induced, more stress is required to reach the yield stress anew and continue to plastically deform the specimen. Plastic deformation also increases the hardness of the material. The definition of hardness will be discussed in a subsequent section. Now you try it. Drag the point and see what happens to the plastic and elastic strain. When you'd like to continue with the lecture, please press the play button. Brittle materials such as glass, cast iron and stone exhibit very little plastic deformation prior to fracture. Failure occurs along a flat plane that is perpendicular to the loading direction. For brittle materials, there is no discernible difference between the ultimate tensile strength and the breaking strength. The cross-sectional area that is under load changes due to the exerted load. As discussed previously when the load normal to the area is compressive, the area increases. On the other hand if the load normal to the area is tensile, the area decreases. The true stress is the stress that is based on the dimensions of the specimen after the load is applied rather than on the original specimen dimensions. The true stress, also known as sigma t, is equal to the normal force. 
divided by the true area. The true area is the cross-sectional area that is perpendicular to the applied load on the specimen after the load is applied. The true strain is defined as the summation of the change of length of the infinitesimally small lengths that make up the specimen divided by the original value of each one of these lengths. In the limit of those lengths tending to zero, the summation becomes an interval from the original length to the deformed length. The interval is solved as a natural logarithm of the instantaneous length of the specimen divided by the original specimen length. The true strain is also called a natural or the logarithmic strain. As a function of the engineering strain, the true strain can be expressed as a natural logarithm of 1 plus the engineering strain. As can be seen on the plot of true strain versus engineering strain, for small values of the engineering strain, both the engineering and true strains are nearly equal. For example at a strain of 0.1, the true strain is 0.095. As the strain increases to larger values, the divergence between the engineering and true strains becomes more pronounced. For example at a strain of 1, the true strain is 0.69. The true strain is more consistent with the physical material deformation than engineering strain. To better understand this fact, consider a hypothetical case in which a specimen is compressed from an initial given length to a length of zero. If this were to occur, it would involve an infinite amount of deformation. Yet using the engineering strain definition, we only get a strain of minus one. You can see this by plugging L equals zero into the engineering strain equation which is L minus L note divided by L note, which gives 0 minus L note divided by L note, which is equal to minus L note over L note, which is equal to minus 1. On the other hand, when the value of 0 final length is plugged into the formula for the true strain, the expected infinite strain is obtained. When the engineering stress strain curve, shown here in red is compared to the true stress strain curve, shown here in green for a specimen under tension, we find that the true stress strain curve continues to increase past the ultimate tensile strength after necking occurs, up to the fracture point. Contrast, that with the engineering stress strain curve, which decreases, past the ultimate tensile strength up to the breaking point. Furthermore, unlike the case when plotting the engineering stress versus the engineering strain, the true stress strain curves for both tension and compression loading look identical. Review questions. What is the difference between elastic and plastic deformation? Right answer. The material with a yield strength of 600 MPa and a modulus of elasticity of 300 GPa undergoes an elongation strain of 1% under a given axial load. When the load is removed, what is the strain value? Right answer. Please fill in the blank. What increases when the material undergoes plastic deformation? Right answer. Which of the following statements is true? Right answer. What is strain hardening? Right answer. Which one of the shown graphs is a true stress, true strain curve? Right answer. Which material is stronger? Right answer. Which material has a higher modulus of toughness? Right answer. Which material has a higher modulus of resilience? Right answer. Which material is more ductile? Right answer. Which material has a higher modulus of elasticity? Right answer. Which material will absorb more energy in the eyes of toughness test? Right answer. The highest stress on the stress strain curve on a material that is tested up to failure is equal to what? Right answer. Please classify the materials given here as brittle or ductile in their most commonly used forms by dragging them into the appropriate box.
Right answer. What is the true stress in a square sample that is placed under tension and undergoes a true strain of point 0.1? What is the relationship between the axial and total strains? How is the lateral strain related to the axial strain? Remember that the specimen has a square cross section. The final width is a function of the lateral strain. The specimen will still have a square cross section after deformation. The true stress is calculated using the deformed cross sectional area. Right answer.